Today we are talking about stupid grocery <laughs> advice. This is a little bit of a Tara rant. So when we do our shows, we're always Googling new titles for the show for this new titles for the same show. <laughs> but I was looking and, and one was um, 15 tips for saving on groceries, I think is what it was or something like that, you know, something brilliant. And so I was reading through some of them just to see what they had. And I was like, this is so stupid. It's not even funny. So today, Tara is doing a version of if you want to actually save money on groceries, don't follow this advice. <laughs> That's today's show. Number one, do we ruffle the feathers first or do we wait? I think we'll wait till last and ruffle the feathers last because this first one that I was going to mention that I'm going to make last now is going to make people really mad. Okay. <laughs> Number one, don't shop online. Mm. Okay. I think that's stupid grocery advice. I'll tell you why. Because one, well, it's stupid and at the same time, it's not. Because yeah, there's two different ways of looking at this. So if you're someone who goes to the grocery store and you see, ooh, this gadget, or ooh, that gadget, or oh, there's some new chips I want to try. If you're that kind of a person, you better be shopping online <laughs> because you will save money if you do shop online. If you just stick to that list, just you stick to your mm -hmm. list. You're not wandering around looking for what you feel like eating. You're not having the taste testers and getting suckered into buying something else. So those types of people, if you have no self-control, you need to be shopping online. So it's really stupid to say don't shop online because for you, you would probably save 20 to 30, probably even 50% on your grocery bill if you did shop online. Now, here's the other side of that coin though. If you're like me... And not to be tooting my own horn, but <laughs> if you're like me, where I go in and I get what I need and I don't, I don't wander around, I don't buy new stuff, but if I happen to see something on clearance, like I got mom a Christmas present the other day that was on clearance for a dollar instead of the $3.98 it normally is. And mom's going to be getting this present for the next holidays for the next year now. So I stocked up on this present. <laughs> and so by spending a dollar on this now, I saved myself 50, 60 dollars. Let's see. Three times 12 is what? Yeah, 50 bucks. I saved myself 50 bucks in the future of buying the same present. Now, same with meat. Yesterday and Monday, we were doing cooking videos. And one of those cooking videos, I found boneless, skinless chicken breasts for $1.26 a pound on clearance. Well, if I would have been shopping online, I wouldn't have found that deal. I had to go to the store to get it. So you need to figure out which kind of a person you are and then do your online shopping according to that. Well, and one thing too, I don't know which category this falls into, but... Um... I watched a gal on YouTube one time and she was talking about they were traveling, her and her husband were traveling and they were going through like blizzarding conditions. It was really bad conditions and she was really stressed out. And she said, have you guys ever done stress shopping online? And I'd never heard this term before, but she said she had her phone out and she was on that phone just shopping the whole time. Okay, she needs therapy then. That's ridiculous. But you know, a lot of people do that. Okay, if you're doing that, you need therapy. I've heard other people do that. And a lot of people in the comments said they do the same thing. Or if they're at the doctor's office, sometimes they're more anxious. And so they're sitting here trying to take their mind off of what being at the doctor's office, whatever they're for, and they're shopping. But a lot of people- Okay, hold on a second. I want to see how prevalent this is. Type one, if you stress shop. Surely there cannot be this many people that do this. Well, yeah, it would be no different than stress shopping, going to a mall type of thing. A lot of people go to the mall when they're upset about stuff and shop. Why would you do that? Well, that's their, that's their, com their, oh my goodness. Yeah. Seriously, you guys actually do this? Yeah, a lot of people do that. Tons of them. What is wrong with you people? <laughs> Get it together. Actually, they're very normal. You need some therapy. 
happy. No, it's very, very normal for gals to do, especially gals to do that more so than guys. But they do when they're, you know, they just to get their mind off okay. of whatever. I'm a total failure at my over. job then. I'm a total failure then. You I told see her she all needs to people. listen to her mother once in a while, you no, know. No, but... <laughs> I don't, but that's okay. But yeah. Oh you know, my goodness. Yeah, people do stress shop. And so you're going to have to find something to substitute. For doing the therapy, online. yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> let me and, let me tell you, Doctor Cloud on YouTube, he's a good one. Well, one thing too, you what you can do, you've got to realize it's an addiction. It's kind of an addiction, and you think it's not affecting your family, but if you're in debt because of this, it is affecting your family. I mean, this woman said she got home and had all these packages arriving, and she didn't even know remember she'd ordered them. This is how that it was. And so like an alcoholic going to the bar that he used to always go to to eat lunch because it's a temptation for him. And so you need to kind of find something. Don't if you find yourself looking at Pinterest and they're starting to pop ads up for you, just go leave it for a while and go do something else until you calm down or you're not under stress, you know, and then you can go back and look. Does that make sense? You know, you find something else you can replace than looking on the computer or on your phone. The phones are even worse now because you can take your phone with you. And if you're upset at the grocery store, I see a lot of moms on their phones at the grocery store and the kids are hollering. And so just to kind of block everything out. They're on that phone and they're shopping because they're upset. But you shouldn't, you shouldn't do this. This is why gals take and hide their shopping from their husbands. They go to the mall or someplace and they hide it or they get stuff from Amazon and they hide it. That's a real problem. You're hurting your family just as much if you're causing yourself to go in debt for this. I know women that have gotten extra credit cards you know, or how do you order extra credit cards or sign up Applied. for extra, apply for extra credit cards? And they've maxed them out and haven't even told their husbands. I mean, well, I saw this YouTuber lady and I was going to do a grocery audit on her. <laughs> Changed my mind. But sitting there and she said, yeah, it's 300 something dollars for nothing but a bunch of junk food. And she said, well, I'm going to put the number on the screen. Because my husband's standing right here, and I don't want him to know how much this yeah, costs. If you're doing that, I'm like, woman, you have serious issues. If you're hiding this from your husband, yeah, when you're hiding stuff from your husband and your family, I I know one gal, tens of thousands, over fifty thousand dollars in credit card debt she did, and her husband had no clue, you know, and she just kept buying and buying and buying, and so it's just hard on a marriage and a family as much as any other kind of addiction, whether it's drugs or alcohol. So you've got to try to recognize what you're doing, acknowledge it, and then find something to take place of it. All right. Next tip. <laughs> you didn't expect that. You said did you, you want to be done tonight early. So, <laughs> no, it's buy, just the be snowing, so buy the Sunday paper and use coupons. Okay. Seriously, this is just dumb. You're not going to save money using the coupons. Actually, people really haven't used saved money to use the coupons. I mean, you kind of did, but this was like 20 years yeah, ago a long when time ago you could. the prices actually were worth saving money for. Now, getting 20 cents off a dollar 99 prego versus a dollar 29 already regular price Walmart pasta sauce. It doesn't save you any money. It actually costs you money. Yeah. So stop using coupons because it really costs you money a lot more now than using them. Yeah. A lot of places don't do the double coupons anymore. Mm -hmm. And we've got more generic products that are actually good, that work really good. So you don't really need them, you know, as much. And um, I do do the digital coupons on my apps, which I yeah, hate that's, to that's despise, a, I but know. I do it. And so, you know, I'm not like against those types of coupons because you kind of have to. But yeah, you have no choice if you want to get the good deals now. But the next one is limit your shopping trips. OK, I did not realize how many people just think, oh, I'm out of spaghetti sauce, so I'm going to go to the store and buy some. What? 
I do not go to the grocery store if I am out one ingredient for dinner. And no, I don't meal plan either. What I do is I fill my pantry with the cheapest prices. Just get yourself a price book. Keep track of the prices. When they're the lowest and best deal, I don't know. Are we out of price books, Mike? We might be out of price books. Uh, I believe we're out. Okay, I think we sold out, but we have them on order coming. So, um, and then figure out when your canned green beans go on sale for 59 cents. Find out when your bonus skinless chicken breasts are $1.47 a pound. And then stock up on those. So what I do is I eat from my pantry that is always stocked. And if I think, oh, I want spaghetti tonight and I don't have pasta sauce. Well, first of all, I always do, but because <laughs> I always keep it stocked. But if, if I wanted to have spaghetti and I don't have pasta sauce, I would not go buy pasta sauce for tonight's dinner. Don't do that. Pick your once a week, once every two weeks, once a month, whatever. But don't just go shopping for one thing at the grocery store. Yeah, and you you can you need to learn to have a few basic menus in your head. It doesn't need to be a whole lot, three or four, if that much, of what you can substitute. Like if she was out of spaghetti sauce, what she could do, she could have pancakes that night and bacon for dinner or pancakes and eggs for dinner. You know, if she's out, of, you can switch your plans up. It's That's one reason why I never like doing menus because years ago, I didn't have a huge stockpile. I just didn't have, have it. You just didn't do it as much back then. And so I never had the stockpile, but if I was out of something, I would immediately change my menu to something totally different if I needed to. You can substitute things and switch things out. You know, if I was going to have dinner rolls and I didn't have flour. Any flour or something, I could make, you know, the box cornbread that I had or whatever. And just know, start learning how you can change your menus. That's one of the reasons I'm complete. Well, I'm not completely against, but. I don't, for myself, don't like using planning a menu because those menus, I'll either not maybe not have something or um, my my uh, activities for the day gets changed over, you know, where I can't have a roast in a, or fried chicken and mashed potatoes and a vegetable and everything because I have 15 minutes to get dinner on the table because we got to run and leave the house real quick that night because our plans are changed. So you've got to keep your menus flexible. Have flexible menu ideas in your head, three to four. Write them down if you've got our planner. You know, write them down. This is five menu plans that are very flexible or things like that. Keep simple things written down. Okay, Mike, go ahead and send me the questions before I get to the last tip that's really going to ruffle everybody's feathers. <laughs> Guys, our Dining on Dime cookbooks are 35% off right now for our October sale. Volume 1 and Volume 2, 24 hours left. It ends tomorrow. Volume 1 is where you need to start if you don't have either of them, but they have totally separate recipes. This is just the basic, super basic to get started, and this is just all the recipes that I couldn't fit in there. And then our gluten-free, dairy-free edition I wrote because I'm gluten-free, dairy-free, and I hated tasting, eating gluten-free food that tastes like sand. And we have our price books, which we may or may not have in stock, and then our um, digital planners, or not our digital, our print planners, guys. These are 400 pages, 365 days. Okay, price books are out, so just ignore everything I say on the price books. We'll probably have them in about three weeks. So sorry <laughs> about that if you missed out on that sale. Well, that's a good thing. Uh, not a good thing that you're out of them. But I am trying to get as many Christmas presents and even some of the groceries that I'll be using for Christmas. If it's on sale for now, like cream cheese was on, was on sale for very cheap, I'm getting this stuff now because like the Christmas presents and things, I'm not sure what's going to be happening financially in the next couple of months. So I want to make sure I have presents for my kids and grandkids. Um, you know, I haven't gotten yours yet. <laughs> the grandkids. Thanks, and grandkids Mom. come first. But at least the grandkids, you know, even like Halloween's going to be, you know, next week. And so I'm going to get 
my candy on sale after Halloween. So I'll be sure to have stuff to make my fudge, my Christmas fudge and things like that. So you need to really think about Christmas presents right now, if you possibly can for some of these things. Amy, is volume one the same as the original Spiral Cookbook? No, it is almost the same. So there's 40 more recipes in there and a couple, I don't know, 100 or so new tips, 100 tips, I can't remember, in volume one. So there's 40 new recipes and then 100 or so tips. And so that is how it's different, but everything else is the same. Well, so. and speaking of tips, if you've got the book and everything, be sure to look in it because we've got gift baskets in there mm -hmm. that you can use for the holidays. We've got jar mixes and that type of thing. We've got a kids section so you can make your own slime, uh, chalk sidewalk. You can make, we have beauty products in there like lotions and uh, do we have soap in there? In volume two. In volume two. And so we've got these gifts that you could be making, a lot of them right now, you know, so be sure to check your books out if you have them to use them for that. Okay. Now for our next feather ruffling tip, which by the way, Michael got really feathered ruffled the other day when a pheasant got trapped in our garage when he was packing your orders. <laughs> so if you find feathers in your book. So if you find a feather in your book. <laughs> Y'all know Mike was having it out with the pheasant in our garage. It was, I told him, why didn't you get your phone? He said, because I was scared. <laughs> it was like I couldn't figure out what it was, and I thought I should maybe figure out what it was first. <laughs> My first thought is film. His first thought is, well, maybe someone's trying to attack us, but I need film. <laughs> Um, Lori, yes, we have a recipe for bath bombs in volume one and on our website, livingonadime.com. Okay, so what is this last tip that they said that you should do to save money on groceries? Shop at warehouse stores. Seriously. <laughs> okay, I am sorry, but warehouse stores, as a general rule, do not save you money, period. I'm sorry. I guarantee you 95% of the people that go in there, maybe 99% of the people that go in there, spend way more money than they ever would if they wouldn't be going to the warehouse store. What is a warehouse store? Costco, Sam's. Those are what I'm talking about. Paying for a membership to go shop at a store and then go in, you're not saving money. Now, the only things that I found at Costco, I have not compared at Sam's, but the only things that I found at Costco's are their chicken, their chickens, their rotisserie chicken is a good deal. Their um, toilet paper is a good deal, laundry soap and trash bags. Now that's the only things that I have found that actually save money at the warehouse store. But even with those, mm -hmm. You would have to have 12 people in your family to make it worth buying that much toilet paper and trash bags and all of that to justify the membership. It just does not save money. No, it doesn't. And I was thinking today, I don't know if they still have them because it's been a while since I've been there. Do they still have the big shopping cart things, the mm -hmm. flatbed? No, well, not, but they're big shopping carts. Huge yeah. shopping carts, bigger than normal mm -hmm. shopping carts. Now this tells you something First of all, you're paying these people to shop at their store, which I think is always thought was crazy. Who pays to go into a grocery store? The second thing. Obviously, a lot I of guess people. a lot of people do. I I'm just, not kidding. They opened a new one when we went to Colorado right by our old house. So we drove by to go see grandma. The parking lot had to have had, oh my goodness, there had to have been a thousand parking spaces. In, I mean, it was huge and it was full. It was absolutely full. So there had to have been 3,000 people. But they're, they're manipulating. It was crazy. They're really good at manipulating because it, like when I was doing Mary Kay, they say charge a higher price because people think they're getting something special and great. So if you have to buy a membership, you automatically think this must be someplace really special to go. And then you get this big shopping cart. Mentally, if you have this huge shopping cart and you go in there for two things and you set them in there, in your mind, everybody else is walking around with piles of stuff in their cart and you've got two things in there. There's no way you're going to just go and buy two things at this place. Then they put out all the samples of stuff 
and that type of thing for you to taste and test. And they do tons of samples, you know. I mean, it's a joke about how much samples they put out. And how many of you have bought things of a sample that you've tasted there? There's just so many things Me. like that that you, yeah, I have too, that you just, uh, you know, you're going to spend more than what you save is what it, the bottom line is what it amounts to. You're just going to spend way more money. And I'll use the Clorox example. I've told this story before. Tar and I had gone to Walmart and we went, uh, I bought a thing of gallon of Clorox for 98 cents at Walmart, which was my normal price I paid. We went straight from there to Costco, walked in the door and this woman was standing at an end cap thing. And she said, Oh my goodness, they've got two Cloroxes together and it's only $2. And all these women, it was the weirdest thing I'd ever seen, went running to the Clorox place and was grabbing up these jugs of Clorox hooked together. This was a great deal. I just paid two cents less at Walmart and I only had to get one jug at a time, you know? And so it's a lot of mental things that you've been condition to think yes you may have there's five items there that you can get much cheaper than any place else but by the time you spend the other stuff the other thing and then i'll let you talk that i, that I get frustrated with i have seen people bring home huge jugs of ketchup and mayonnaise and sour cream or cottage cheese these huge jugs and they only have a family of two or three well then what happens is they don't use it up fast enough in these big containers of things and they throw half of it out. So they have- Besides like peanut butter, first of all, who wants to be hauling that big of a container of peanut butter well, out the cabinet? And secondly, it's got oil. It's going to spoil before you use it if you don't turn, have a family of 15. Yeah. And this stuff spoils and it gets thrown out all the time. So in essence, not only did you not save money, but you spent more money than if you just bought the small containers and paid maybe 30 cents more for a small container than the big, huge jug things. So you know? if you really want to save money, stop shopping at the warehouse store. Yeah. That's my That's what the thing is. for this. And energy and stress. I'm sorry. I got so stressed carrying those big boxes and containers of things and packing them in the car and then unloading them at home. And then you've got to try and figure out where am I going to put all this stuff? And, and I'm not going to say Costco doesn't have cool stuff. They do. Oh yeah. I love it's all their cool stuff. But Neiman Marcus probably has cool but, stuff too, you know, but you've got to be reasonable about it. it. Yeah. Denise, Tara, could you tell me some of the recipes in your dairy-free, gluten-free cookbook? Thank you. Your sweet family for the info you share. You're welcome. Oh, um, thank you. Okay, so I don't know. So the hardest thing for people for gluten-free, dairy-free is like the bread. So I have sourdough bread. I have dinner rolls. I have French bread. I have regular sandwich bread. Hush, hush puppies. puppies. Apple bread. Coffee cake. Banana bread. Pumpkin bread. Cinnamon roll. Muffins. I have crepes. Biscuits. Garlic cheese biscuits. Gluten-free flour. Um, French toast, all of your syrups, maple syrup, all of those, how to do turkey, Swiss steak, turkey slow gravy. Food gray roast, all your gravies, all your barbecues, your beef marinade, your seasoned salt, white cake, yellow cake, chocolate cake, brownies, peanut butter cookies, soft, regular sugar cookies, Chocolate chip cookies, mudslide cookies, snickerdoodles, oatmeal cookies, roasted nuts, bonbons, fudge. I mean, I've got it all. Yogurt, popsicles, all of them. So desserts, all kinds of desserts. That's a really quick. I think Mike on the gluten free page does it flip through like the rest of the cookbooks. Um, I believe so. I think it flips through on that one also and so you can go and it'll flip through okay yeah so the book is on the sales page and watch the video and you can see every single recipe it'll that's show in there the pages yeah mm -hmm. please click on see what's inside on all on the books all the books you can go ahead and see that jim wants to know but what's wrong with a thousand ounces of mayhem jim, <laughs> jim. i love you jim because <laughs> it's food poisoning <laughs> Jim. <laughs> oh, Jim. That's Calm funny. down, Jim. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me get to the questions here. All right. If you have questions, please leave them in the comment <laughs> section here and Mike will pull them and I will um, answer them for you. Kimberly says I'm the clean queen of cliffhangers. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I take that as a compliment, actually. <laughs> Vicki says we are you guys in Wyoming are getting snow while those of us in Arizona are having a heat wave. And that is uh, why I don't live in Arizona. I will put up with cold any day over heat. Oh, uh, goodness. Uh, contrast. Ellen says, shop the outside aisles of the store. No, actually, I don't think you should start shop just the outside aisles of the store because there are a lot of good deals just sitting on the shelf where they put a clearance sticker just on something that a package is changing or something like that, yeah, or they're they moving have. it or something. Like the other day, I found coconut, coconut pineapple juice already bottled. And I was like, oh, that would be a great dairy-free thing. So I checked it out and I just bought one. It was 50 cents. So I thought, okay, I'll just buy one and just see if it's a good deal because normally they're $3. So I thought, okay, I'll buy one and see if, it's, see if it's worth it. So I bought it and tasted it and I was like, hmm, okay, well, this isn't really worth it. So I knew that I didn't want to stock up on this drink stuff. And um, which, by the way, if you guys buy it, it is not dairy-free. As I was standing there at the cash register, I was looking closer at the ingredients. And even though it says coconut pineapple coconut milk. It says coconut milk. It's not coconut milk. It has milk in it. So be really careful. But anyway, those were in a middle aisle and I would have totally missed them if they would have worked for me. I could have got a good deal for a treat for once in a while. So yeah, um, you can find things on, they're getting rid of them. So. Jan, do you remember which video it was you showed making ends in your Dutch oven? I can't find it. Oh, I have no idea which video that was. Can't. But what's funny was I was going, I just cooked bacon yesterday that way. And um, I was going to film it and I thought, no, I won't. So I will cook it again next week and we'll put it up on super easy recipes. All I do is just dump my bacon in there and just stir it every 10 minutes or so until it's cooked. So what do you turn temperature? Just medium. No. Whatever's not splattering. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. Uh, Nancy says shopping online is great for families with young children and husbands, as you guys will see. On Saturday's grocery audit. Mm. Okay, I'll tell you if you want a cliffhanger, Kimberly. Saturday's grocery audit is not at all what anybody thinks <laughs> or the advice that they think I'm going to be giving. <laughs> Actually, they're going to think I'm going to be given one one thing of advice, and my advice my advice is totally different. Um. All right. Uh, yes. The grocery delivery. Everybody's talking about grocery delivery. Yes, that is really good. I used to do it all the time in Colorado. Here, I don't do it so much. Um, Kimberly says, now if I feel like I need to do some shopping, I just head right to the resale shop. That way I know I can get it for what I need, whatever cheap. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for some canisters that have just a pull top lid. So I'm just hitting the thrift stores until I find them. Yeah. And then I'll do them. Patricia, they say gardening is great therapy. They lie. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that. I totally agree. Yeah, if you're 100%. not into gardening, it's not good therapy. It is, it is not It'll good therapy. It'll put you into therapy. It'll it put you into therapy for sure. <laughs> yeah. I totally agree. <laughs> it's not uh, good. <laughs> crazy cat lady, stress shopping. Wait, is there any other kind? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> what is wrong with you people? <laughs> I can't believe Get she didn't know therapy. about stress Well, I shopping. mean, I knew about it, but I didn't know it was this common. Yeah, like it is. Three quarters of you, let me go back, like three quarters of you <laughs> said you stress shop. Have you been listening to anything we have said for the last 25 years? <laughs> Look at all these ones. Mm -hmm. One, 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 one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I know must be willing to say between 50 and 75 percent of the shopping gals do it is stress shopping. So. <laughs> Vicki, what do you have against gardening, mother? Me? Yes, Vicki wants to know. I don't have anything against it. I used to have gardens myself when I was younger, but 
it's just, it's a lot of work and it's too hard for me to do now. You know, I think a lot of people, uh, well, it's kind of like I do quilting and people say, why do you cut the pieces apart and take all the work to sew them back together again? It doesn't even make sense. And to me, gardening, I can go buy a tomato at the grocery store, you know, for much less work. And it doesn't really save huge amounts of money unless you've got a monster garden. And she's not very good at it either. Well, you know, I did used to have them, but you, it has, you do all this work and bugs come and kill and eat everything or well, animals eat everything or like I've got six boxes of tomatoes in my garage right now, ripening and my freezers are full. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, so now I'm going to have to start dehydrating more tomatoes and it's just kind of a pain in the It's dealing with really. the stuff afterwards but that you have. I'm a huge gardener. I have nothing against gardening. I'll Car garden any it, day. Yeah. But Car does. She just loves it. Yeah. And, but, it, and it gets stirred under my fingernails on top of that. So, but you know what? Tar's fingernails grows more in the summer when she's doing gardening from getting the soil. I think there's something in the soil that causes my nails so to grow. So if you want your nails to grow. <laughs> but at the same time, then I keep chipping them too because I don't wear gloves. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Um, send me the next batch, Mike. Denise, I wonder, Tara, I wonder if women who make excuses for spending over budget shopping and purchasing would excuse their husbands for doing the same thing. I know. Yeah, they wouldn't. That's for sure. You're being a little hypocritical thing mm -hmm. there. Or they, <laughs> if their husbands kept secrets from them, wouldn't they be upset about that? You know, I mean, I'm just shocked how many women hide stuff from their husbands that they bought. That's that's marital problems there, you know, and, and, you know, there's, okay, I hate to say this, but there's a lot of sweet Christian women out there that, that are there's a, a lion, little bit manipulative. judgmental in other areas. But when you do something like that, you're lying. And it's, it's not, it's almost like committing adultery. You know, you're being sneaky and hiding something that you should, it's, one of the Ten Commandments when you lie. I need questions, Mike. So, all right, guys, our Dining on a Dime cookbooks are 35% off right now. Volume one and volume two, easy recipes, 1,200 recipes and tips in this one, 800 in the second edition, the blue one. Easy recipes. You can get in and out of the kitchen quick with food you already have on hand. You don't have to buy nothing special. Our gluten-free, dairy-free edition, you will not be eating sand. As a matter of fact, I did videos for my gluten-free channel yesterday and the pumpkin bread was gone by this morning. I made it <laughs> yesterday afternoon and poof, it was all gone this morning. And I wasn't eating it all. It wasn't me. The whole family ate it. Our daily planners, 400 pages, 365 days undated. You can see inside all the books on our sales page, guys, in the description below. So, 24 hours and the sale is over. If you like making lists for Christmas and the holidays of things to do and stuff, you can use that now, you know, get it now and use it through the rest of the, for another year yes, then. The planner. Yes. So you don't lose any days. Yeah. Uh, Laura, I usually buy chicken thighs when they are 99 cents a pound. What is a good buy price for boneless, skinless thighs? So I would say now... If you find them for $1.47, that's a really good price. But I have seen them last week. I don't remember what state it was. Maybe Michigan. Had them for $0.97 cents for the chicken tenders. So that's really good. I mean, I would fill my whole freezer for that. Um, and anything $2 or under is a good deal. $1.48 is a great deal. $0.97 cents is a stupendous deal for what I've seen. Um, Deb. Newspapers are three dollars now. Holy moly! Yeah, that that's even make it that's work one it. of the reasons I stopped clipping coupons because mm -hmm. Wichita has one of the most expensive newspapers I think in the nation. It's always been horrible. I mean, like twenty years ago, it was a dollar twenty or dollar seventy five for the Sunday paper, and this was like twenty. 25 years ago, which, and that was pretty high for just the one day newspaper. So by the time I got the newspaper and got, you know, I didn't, and they didn't double the coupons anymore. It wasn't worth it for me to use coupons. So. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Danielle. Oh, she's loving our price book, but we're sold out. Sorry guys. So if you're watching this later, go get our price book. She is loving our price book and telling everyone to get it. So I just ordered more today. 
So they are on the way. So it'll probably be about three weeks before I get them. But um, yes, we ran out way quicker than we thought we would. So I'm so glad you guys are liking them. Deborah, my eight-year-old helped me make gluten-free snickerdoodles last week and says they are delicious and were hit at the party. That is great. Nancy, the other day someone asked if you had a recipe for gluten-free cinnamon rolls. All they have to do is use your recipe for the gluten-free white sandwich bread and go from there. Yes, mm -hmm. but if you want something even easier, I have cinnamon roll muffins. They taste just like cinnamon rolls, but gluten-free dough does fall apart more than regular dough. And so cinnamon rolls is kind of hard. So do the gluten-free cinnamon rolls in there. That's um, a good way to get around that. Um, Joanne, some people me menu plan from their pantries. And that's totally fine. That's what mm -hmm. I would do. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's how I would do it if you just really like menu planning. Yeah. I don't like menu planning. So I just cook the same things and just keep it in my pantry. But um, Donna, I do menus on what I have for one to two weeks at a time. And I keep a running list of the items to buy at the next store visit. Yep. And, uh, Maria Sophie says my downfall is actually working at the grocery store. Ooh. Oh. It is way too easy to pick up X, Y, Z yet up, uh, even though I'm not really needing it. I try to, I try not to. <laughs> that is where I could save money. Maybe you should find another draw. <laughs> that is tempting. That would might, be tempting. Might save more money being a secretary or something. <laughs> that is tempting. Yeah. Um, everybody's loving their books. Thank you oh, all. For, thank you. If you've for ordered them. already. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle, I need to make Rice Krispie treats for my sister's party on Saturday. Yes, I think... That is volume two. We have Rice Krispie Treats and variations in there. Mm -hmm. um, Elizabeth says she just received her price book and yesterday's shopping receipt went into the price books. Very good. Good, good. good. Mm -hmm. Okay. I did today for um, Saturday's grocery audit. Today I showed how to use the grocery um, price. There just showed how to use the pro price book to save on groceries. That was one of her big questions was she didn't know what was best, best, uh, deals when the, when were the best deals. And that is how you do it. So you're going to show that on Saturday's mm -hmm. audit then how to do that. Yeah. And then I have a surprise twist on, it <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> I'm not going to say what you guys think I'm going to say. Well, actually, if you've watched me for a while, you know what I'm going to say. But Michelle, uh, or I mean, Elizabeth, uh, or no, Vicki, sorry. I admit I have hid my online packages from my husband so he won't throw the packages at me. Well, you deserve to have them thrown at you. What is wrong with you? Oh, my goodness. This is not okay. Actually, seriously, this is not okay. But you know, everybody, almost everybody I seems don't. to do it. I don't either. I never did, but you'd be surprised. I just flat out tell Mike, hey, I'm going and buying such and so today. <laughs> That's why I say, <laughs> well, I mean, he does all the bookkeeping, so he sees it all anyway, but still. <laughs> you know, part of it, now part of it is I knew a gal that her mom did that. And when she got married, she thought that's just the way everybody did, that you hid your stuff from your husband, that you weren't supposed to show them, you know, what you bought, that that was just a way to do things. So I'm sorry, but people, seriously, sometimes people if that's are you, like you need it. to get some serious help. That's so. ridiculous. Oh, my goodness. Sorry <laughs> to pick on you, Vicki, but my goodness, get it together. <laughs> Denise, I get three dollars off the only hand wash lotion that works for me. I use coupons whenever I can. Very good. Mm -hmm. Now we're not saying never ever use coupons. Uh, you know, well, we get... okay, hold on. Doris says, "What about extreme coupon? I don't bother with coupons, but I know some extreme coupon and save a lot on each order. That's extremely rare now. Yeah, I mean that used to be a thing, and it was really big, and you could do that." But now it's a lot harder now yeah. to do it. But if you do get a coupon for a good deal, like on a box of cereal, you get $2 off, you know, on a 
$3 box cereal or something like that. Yeah, we're not saying not to do it. And you got to be reasonable on this stuff. We're just saying don't be do extremes. Holy cow. Ellen says she used to go to festivals and drop $400. Well, I'm not surprised the gals go I'm to quilt. I'm glad you got together. Gals go to quilt shows and they'll spend $1,000. I know quilters that do that. Here, I was feeling guilty getting my 249 little bird at home at a Hobby Lobby the other day. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Kimberly. Um... Wait, Lori says you just told us the other day to shop at multiple stores. Yeah, you should still shop at multiple stores. Just one of them shouldn't be the warehouse store, if that's yeah. what you're meaning. No, if you can, go, into, if you can go in the warehouse store and buy the four things that is cheaper there and, and walk in. And you save more than your fee. Yeah, and you walk in there and you can do that and walk out without buying anything else, then do it. But most people can't do that. Tanya says, one thing I need to stop is buying snacks on my lunch and break. Stop it! <laughs> Just stop it! You know, try to bring something with you. Carry something in your purse or, you know, bring something from home if you can. Robin says, my first stop is clearance section, then scan the meat section for manager specials. Very good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love those manager specials. Tanya says, I spent over $500 this month on food. It's just my boyfriend and I do to convenience shopping. Oh, honey, you got to stop. Mm. You're going to be in the poor house. Yeah. You are going to be in the poor house. For two of you, it really shouldn't cost more than two hundred dollars. It yeah. really shouldn't. Watch, watch more of our videos and stuff because we tell you how to, you know, kind yeah. of wean yourself away from doing that. Um, Emily says H E B doesn't even honor manufacturers coupons anymore. Wow, my goodness. Okay. Um, <laughs> Melissa, how do you know when things are normally on sale? So what I do is here on, when I put my price on here, I just put the date of when it's on sale and then I watch for when it goes on sale again. And then I put the next date and then I'll know if it goes on sale every four weeks, six weeks or 12 weeks or eight weeks. So. Because I looked on today's ad and they've got eggs on sale again at Albertsons. And it was just, I think, two weeks ago that they had eggs on yep. sale. So I've now I've you get a pattern so you don't have to look it up every time you start memorizing it. Kind of Lisa says it has saved me shopping Sam's for cheaper gas. I've done the price comparison. Yeah. But so here's the thing. OK, I guess if you have a truck, it's fine. But I'm not exaggerating. Every time I've driven by Costco or Sam's in Colorado, I counted last time. There was 10 pumps, 10 pumps. There was no less than 10 cars at each pump mm -hmm. waiting. Mm -hmm. You could wait 45 minutes to save yourself $20. Yeah. Is that worth it? Especially if you're paying for the membership too. I don't see how that's worth it. I mean, I guess if you get in and get out of there, but yeah. You have to factor in everything, your time. You know, like I... I couldn't afford to sit at the gas pump for even 20 minutes because I could be at home doing my piano parts and make four times that amount, you know, so factor in all these different things. Does it work for your lifestyle and that type of thing? Celiac, Helen says, Celiac disease sure makes baking interesting. You need our dining on it. I am gluten-free, dairy-free edition right there. I've tested all the recipes. And I'm telling you, they work. So that will help you get some of your baking frustrations. And so Actual far, everybody that's work. gotten the gluten-free have liked it, haven't mm -hmm. they? So if yeah. any of you had the gluten-free, hop in and let us know if, if you do like it. What is your beauty secret for having smooth-looking skin? Who, me? Here, get closer so they can see the wrinkles. <laughs> <laughs> can you zoom in, Mike? Zoom in zoom so they in can so see they the wrinkles. wrinkles. I do have wrinkles, guys. I do. They're getting... They're starting to get wrinkly up there. I am. <laughs> we do have a thing on what Tara and I use for our There's skincare. There's a couple of videos. Yeah, a couple of videos. I Just, think mostly it's genetics, to be honest. Well, we don't smoke. We not don't only drink, genetics, so. but, you know, like Tara started when I was starting to sell Mary Kay. I don't sell it anymore. And I don't even use Mary Kay very much anymore because I don't sell it. But she was like 14, I think when I was selling that and I, she wasn't even really wearing makeup. So what I did was I got her started on skincare at that time to have a good routine. What I found out, I went for years and had horrible, my face was just horrible. But I found out after doing the Mary Kay is 
if you have a basic skin routine, and it was hard for me to start doing it, where you find some kind of a, a moisturizer, a, a cleanser, basic cleansers. I usually just use about anything for a cleanser. You know, like I use baby soap or I use the cheapy uh, oil of Olay from Walmart for my cleanser. I don't get too fancy for that, but moisturizer, uh, exfoliating like exfoliation is really important. So if you get a routine and stay, stick with the routine, that helps your face more than anything. If um, people don't realize that we always said, you know, an artist, you, people want to glob the makeup on you know, to cover up the imperfections. But if you can, no artist wants a yuckety canvas and you need to have a smooth, nice canvas to start out with. And that comes with the skin routine. So. Mountain of Badlands is done Christmas shopping. She got new PJs for everyone. Very good. Very good. Yeah. Very good. I off how to begin my gift shopping and make for the next year, right after Christmas. Yep. Mm -hmm. You too. And Ellen says, Sam's the $500 store. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> uh, yeah. Amy says, we get our membership free from our employer. Okay. Then that's fine. Yeah. And that's Still save you money, but that's fine. But you know, that's something you factor in, whether you go there and what you bought, spend now, there. Now, there are, a, I'm not saying you're not going to save money at all. But what happens is you go in there to save money and you end up buying the eight pound bag of popcorn that you don't need and the three, 10 pound bags of chips or a gallon of olives or whatever. Well, and another so. thing too, you have to be careful because I always hear people say, well, I just get it at Sam's club or Costco because it's cheaper there. Mm -hmm. And they totally blank out trying another grocery store or checking the prices at Walmart. You need to check, you know, other places. Just don't assume. Now I will say though, when I had a Costco membership, I did one for when we were doing, I had to get one for the toilet paper test. But I did find that the Allegra allergy medicine was significantly cheaper that just within, I think, two bottles, I saved the membership cost just by getting my allergy medicine there. But now Dollar Tree carries it. And so it's even cheaper to get it at Dollar Tree. Mm -hmm. Than it is at Costco. So you still have to be just, careful. Just don't assume that they're the cheapest is what I'm saying. Um, okay, guys, type one for Amy's question. Raise your hand if you eat the samples for free meal and not buy the product. <laughs> that's what yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> I know. Yep, that's what mm. I do. And then I go get the dollar pizza slice for the kids. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, just go uh, there for the free stuff. <laughs> my cup overflow says we have a family of eight, and Costco has good deals on clothes, ten dollars jeans, shoes for kids. Yes, but you can get them cheaper at the thrift store. Yeah. So I, you're not saving money. That's not saving yeah. money, especially with kids' clothes. Mm -hmm. uh, Ninety-five percent of our clothes are bought used. I can't really buy shoes now because Jack's a size thirteen. <laughs> so I have a I can't really buy used shoes because I don't normally find shoes in those sizes. But if I happen to find them, I'll pick them up. But everything else, almost everything else is used. So no, you're not saving money at Costco That's what, because you get a better deal at thrift stores. That's so. why I say you need to check other places. Mm -hmm. I got two pairs of jeans at our thrift store for 50 cents each. And they look like they'd never been worn, you know, yeah. so you've got to check other places. People just assume this is a good deal. They come from spending lots of money at other stores, but to, to Costco and think, well, this is a good deal compared to like Macy's or something like that, maybe. But you've got to just really check the prices in different places. Okay. I need the next batch, Mike. Um... Susan, have we stepped up our stocking because of the war? Which war? There's so <laughs> many going on. So, no, we haven't stepped up our stocking, but we have continued to just keep our stockpile full. Mm -hmm. So, but which is what we do anyway. That's the whole point of doing this. You don't have to do anything extra when something when happens. Something, you're prepared ahead of time so you don't have to stress out or panic over anything. Yeah. It just That's why I went for years. I didn't even know recessions were happening because I was always just continually mm -hmm. prepared. And speaking of war, 
guys, please keep praying for Israel. You know, I mean, we really need to pray for Israel. Um, okay, let's see. Susan says she made the hot chocolate from the gluten-free, dairy-free video. Tasted so good. Isn't that delicious? Oh my goodness. It's just the best hot chocolate ever. I like it way better than regular chocolate, uh, hot chocolate, because it tastes like a uh, Mounds candy bar. Susan, or I mean, Amy, she's making our Alfredo sauce. I think that's volume two for the Salvation Army dinner tonight. That's oh. another delicious one. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Patricia says, this is off topic, but do you think Christians should move to be closer to their adult children with everything that's going on in the world? Is there any point because the rapture is so close? Well, first of all, do your adult children want you near them? <laughs> I mean, seriously, yeah, really. some parents just assume their adult, not you, some parents just assume <laughs> their adult kids want them near them. And maybe their kids don't, maybe their kids moved away for a reason. Um, first of all, but second of all, I would say, yes, I think it's good to have family nearby Close to help by. each other. So yeah. I would definitely, if it's feasible for you, Possibly it's practical. Yeah. You might consider doing it just to be closer to them. And you said, is it even worth it with the rapture being so close? Well, so, I mean, we got to weigh everything with that. I know. You know, I mean, I could just quit doing all of this because the rapture's so close that, okay, if we're gone in six months, what am I doing all this? We got six months worth of living expenses. We don't need to, we don't need to be doing this. And so it is a is a good question you can't just stop because your life, you do. I, I I go waver back and forth on different things. You know, should I bother painting my house or should I remodel this or redo that because the rapture is going to come? And I was thinking the other day of doing something. I thought, well, I'll wait till spring till I see if the rapture comes or not. You know, and so I understand what you're saying is because it is getting so you can sense it, and that's what I find amazing. One of the things we you don't hear talking people talking about a whole lot, but I've never seen this in my lifetime. Now I'm 72 years old, and I've known about the rapture since I was little, and I've watched things happen, and I've been fascinated with the rapture and learned a lot about it over the years, but I've never sensed something in Christians now that they're feeling and sensing something like I've never seen so many of them experience before. It's really kind of fascinates me how that's happening. But I still say rapture not setting it aside that it's better if you ever can be closer to your adult children, especially as you get older, you know, you're going to need help yourself. And I think as if families get along well, uh, I think it's good to be as close to them as you possibly can. Yeah. Kathy, my legs hurt today because, Tara, you caused me to redo my spices. <laughs> good for you. You go. <laughs> Sorry we caused you pain. <laughs> Mike and I still haven't recovered from doing our driveway It's like Sunday. exercising. Look at the good that comes out of the pain. <laughs> Kathy, I said you're going to be the death of me, motivating my butt to do the things I procrastinate. <laughs> Are you the one that said, I don't remember if it, I don't remember the last name. Were you the one that sent it to me on uh, Facebook? Send me the pictures. If so, you're done a good job. <laughs> uh, Lori says it snowed where she is today. Yep, mm. we're supposed to get six inches tonight. Diana, please share how you stretch food like your three chicken quarters from the last life. How Jill, Jill uses every bit and then makes mini meals from a little bit of meat. I use your tips and I think these tips are helpful. So first of all, I'm going to be doing a video on that for super easy recipes, showing how I take the chicken quarters and make them in the two. Um, or I mean, yeah, show them how I make them into that. But all you do is just roast your chicken first. So your first meal is eating your roast chicken. The second meal is taking all the leftover chicken bones and then boiling them. And then you're peeling the meat off and you have your broth. So then half of that meat that you peeled off, because there's usually a lot left, mm -hmm. then you put that in some, um, something like what? Casser chicken, chicken noodle casserole. soup or chicken casserole. And then I use it the other half for something like green chili. So it's like three or four ounces worth of chicken. So you're, tasting chicken, but it's not a huge amount of protein. You're filling more up on vegetables in the mm -hmm. soup.
Kathy, do you have a fruitcake? <laughs> fruitcake is Tar's favorite. Fruitcake is and probably my favorite she has tried for years year. to find the perfect fruitcake. And cake. I found it. No, I found it and put it in the book. Well, yeah, and then she found, she and looked for the perfect one and found I, the perfect one. Let's see. And now she can't eat it hardly. Fruit. Is it volume one or volume two? Probably volume two because it takes a lot of um, the dried candy. Candy see. fruits are kind of expensive. So we, Fruit. put, we put it in number two. Fruit cake, 276. And I mean, she has for years tried different fruit cakes. Every year. It was just like a joke in the house. Right there. <laughs> Yes, and I even make, for those of you wondering, I even make this gluten-free, dairy-free for me now, and all I do is just use coconut, sweetened condensed milk, and flour instead of the flour and sweetened condensed milk, but it's good. <laughs> yes, I am a fruitcake connoisseur. <laughs> Wanda, if, yeah, if gluten didn't make me sicker than a dog, I would have a taste test every Christmas just to write it off on my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> I would do it. <laughs> Wanda, yesterday I went to Safeway for whole chickens for 87 cents a pound. They were out, so I got a rain check. I found manager special boneless skinless chicken breast for $1.97 a pound. So I grabbed that and we'll, some of, we'll, I guess, cook some of it tonight and freeze the rest. Yep, very good. I love rain checks. Be sure to check for rain checks because what happens is I may not need that that's on sale right that moment. Or I'll get the rain check, and then maybe the next day it's still supposed to be on sale, and they happen to have it on the shelf then. And so I can buy some then and then save my rain check for later. Uh, Amy says, I know they're taking a long time for the grocery audits, but I feel like the real-time situation so many are in, and I didn't realize it. Yeah. And what I'm noticing is people really aren't paying attention to their groceries. Yeah. They're really I not paying attention too. to what they're doing. No. And they're not paying attention to how their whole life is affected. This is, let me tell you, Saturdays, you guys need to watch Saturday's grocery haul because this is a get it together people moment. <laughs> but they don't realize how their whole life is affecting their grocery bill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Terry, it's mini shot for socialization and the nice cashier words given to regulars too. Yep. Denise, she stress eats too, and I suppose this increases my out-of-pocket budgeting expenses. Man, I'm a piece of work. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel bad. You're in good company. You don't have to buy a lot to socialize with the employees. You don't have to buy a lot to socialize with the employees at the store? I used to be an employee. Yes, <laughs> Mike would social, Michael socialize with Oh, anybody. Michael really socialized. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, speaking of socializing, I didn't tell, do I have time to tell you this? I didn't tell you what know. happened at the grocery store to me the other day. It was so cute. I just love being here because I find it fascinating that you, when you're in line shopping at Walmart or grocery store, it's a social, it is a big social event. You don't just socialize with the well, cashier. Well, maybe for some people, but it ain't for me. <laughs> well, you put the people in front of you, we start talking to people behind we start talking and visiting and i got a guy in front of me an older guy and it was so funny he was talking about yeah i'm not moving to this certain town he was talking he said there's so many things happening he said when i go up there he said i make sure i carry my gun with me when i go up there i thought who when they go to go shopping out of town, carries their gun with them to make uh, sure. In Wyoming, they, they do. I know. And he was telling me all about how he makes sure he has that gun with him when he goes shopping because it's good. And oh, the road, the it's Billings. But mm. it's not like Denver or anything where you have all the traffic. And he said the traffic there is just horrible. And I thought, oh my goodness. It was really cute though. He was going on and on about taking his gun shopping. You learn a lot about people when you're um, in the grocery line here. So, uh, Jane, Mike, this is for you. She wants to know, are you paying on the mortgage? I'm not paying extra right now. Oh, are you on? You're on. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So now it's going to be a little echo on the mic. Um, I'm not paying extra right now. I paid, we paid a massive amount off for a long time and then we got 
kind of ahead of everything with the kitchen and all that. And so the cash flow got really tight. So I said, I think I'm going to stop paying for a while until it gets better. And it's, it's improving. So hopefully soon. Yes. We don't have that much left to go. So no. we're, I'm really we're getting close. excited to do it. Well, and we had this year on top of the kitchen, we had a lot of dental, dental bills. Mm -hmm. We had a crown, a root canal and a, um, yeah, we had like, we're probably up to 7,000 just in medical or just in dental bills this year. And we've probably had close to probably 5,000 in medical that's not been covered. And so we've had some really big expenses mm -hmm. too that we hadn't planned for either. Um, Karen, I just bought 24 packs of Crystal Light. Buy one, get one free. Cheapest price since before that thing going around. Very good. Mm -hmm. Um, Kitsy, love growing small batches of plants like basils, peppers, potatoes. Yep. Mm -hmm. I do too. It's manageable. Yep. Yeah. That's a good way to do it. Jill, Heather says, Jill, I love your top. It's beautiful. Well, thank you. Amy, she rides her bike and garden for exercise and stress reduction. There you go. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Heather says, we have the best cookbook collection ever. Thank you so much. 35% off right now in the description below, guys. Our October sale ends tomorrow, 24 hours. Also, for those of you waiting for our planner to go on sale, they are 10% off right now. 400 pages, 365 days. And for some of you that are wondering that have never seen our cookbooks, it, they're practical everyday recipes. I don't think people understand no. that till they get them and they're so surprised how easy they are. They're home. They're like home cooking. I mean, I even laugh because people are always talking about Amish recipes and Amish stuff. like. Oh that. my goodness. Amish food is gross. Well, I mean, we do have the Sorry. same type of recipes in there, you know, uh, it's just home cooking is what it is. And people love it. And like, who was it? So it's about their, her eight year old son was helping make the snickerdoodle cookies. You know, the kids can use the recipes. They're so simple and young men love using them. And so that's, I think I've been watching these YouTubers and they do cooking out of their cookbooks and they're really have exotic ingredients and all this fancy stuff that you have to get where ours is just basic good old grandma cooking, but you know, Julie says, seven years ago, I saw a woman with a pistol on her side, and she was a couponer arguing with the cashier. <laughs> I told my husband, let's hurry and get out of here. Oh, that's good. Wow. Uh, that's okay. funny. Uh, yeah, go ahead and send me a mic. <laughs> Amy says, I use Back to Eden Gardening is the method she uses. Yes, I... So what's so funny about back to Eden garden method, garden, the back to Eden method of gardening is I've been doing that even before it came a thing. I remember when I was 15 years old, I put a pile, I filled an old bathtub we had sitting in the backyard and I filled it all the way up with leaves. And then I planted my strawberries on top of it. And then the leaves just shrunk down. Of course, my strawberries kept going down with it, but I just made my own compost as I was growing the strawberries. So I, I think it's the best method ever. I don't compost a lot. I just put my produce, not my produce, my um, stalks and stuff just straight back into the garden as mulch. And then I just cover it with more mulch. And that's how I Well, that's do what it, I so. do then every year. Yeah. I do. I have a compost pile here. It's about this big. And I just throw everything in there. And I grew two t potatoes this year just from, I didn't even plant them. They just grew. And then when I was in Wichita, I'd have tomato plants and cantaloupe growing in my little compost pile. So I didn't know it was a thing. So it's a special thing. <laughs> so I do do gardening. <laughs> Katie, my friend's pastor told her to recite Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. Every time she was tempted to shop needlessly, she did that for a few weeks and doesn't struggle anymore. Very good. Yeah, yeah. that's I a mean, good way to do, do that. That's yeah. something good to do. Pick a verse and yeah. immediately when you feel something 
you know, stressful. the earth stressful or whatever, just start, just repeating. start repeating it. And you, if you, the sooner you can stop mm -hmm. it, when that first thought comes into your mind, the sooner you can stop it by quoting that verse or praying or something, asking God, I need help here because I'm getting ready to, you know, do what I shouldn't do. Help Lead me. me not into temptation. Yeah, exactly. The Bible, <laughs> you know, says for us to say, pray that. And you pray for him to help. Lead you not into temptation. temptation. And it works. You know, for years I went and I didn't claim the promises that God has in the Bible. He wants us to claim those promises. To, you know, he tells us, I will do this for you if you just ask me. But we just don't often bother to yeah. ask. Oh, Kimmy, thanks for telling uh, everybody to give us a thumbs up. <laughs> thank thank you. you. Guys, when you give us a thumbs up, it helps the algorithm know that you like you, us. And, and it's the one, the thumbs up under the picture, right? The yeah. thumbs up there is what we need to... It makes a big difference. Terry says, what do you do and how do you approach entering the fresh for produce? I think is what she meant department. Um, well, I go in with my list and I need lettuce and carrots and, and cucumbers and I pick them up and I go. That's all I do. I yeah. don't, there's nothing special. If something's on sale or clearance, then I'll check and see if it's a good deal, a better deal than normal and I'll get it. But other than that. We used to, in Wichita, have a clearance section. They don't have it here, or at least I haven't found it for vegetables. Mm -hmm. And I would always hit the clearance section of the fruits and vegetables first and then go from there. Oh, my goodness. What? Lynn says her mom is in her 80 and she shops at Costco. She went with her once and she was shocked that she spent over $800 just for herself. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, that's a lot. See, it's it's... I, yeah, that is a lot. And people are kind of, I, I talked to a woman I knew at a bank one time, a cashier. I talked to a lot of cashiers now that I think about it. But anyway, I talked to her and she just loved Costco. But I could tell after talking to her for several years, she always brought it up. And it was like, she just thought that that was the only place she could get good deals. And she didn't understand that she could go to another store. She'd tell me prices that she got for something. I'm thinking, well, I just saw that on sale at another store, grocery store, you know. But the way she talks, you can't buy stuff that cheap anyplace else. And you've got to get out of that mindset that they're the only place that you can buy things, you know, cheap, too. Um... Uh... Oops, let's see. Hold on, I lost my place here. Um, okay, Amy, Tara, are you tracking prices compared to the last few years? I always check my prices. Prices are always changing on everything. Mm -hmm. Like eggs will be cheap one time a year and not another time a year. Milk will be cheap one time and not cheap. Beef is not cheap and then it's cheap. So I'm always tracking prices. And like when beef was always over $4 a pound, like in 20, was it 21 or 22? I can't remember. But we went almost a year without eating any ground beef because I refused to pay $5 a pound for ground beef when yeah. I can get chicken for $2. So you just don't eat it. But that's what I do. I just am continually tracking. Yeah. So um, Valley of the Badlands, we just weaned our calves, cooked for 22 people, only had to buy one two pound bag of peas for supper. Very good. Oh, good. Everything else was from the garden. Good job. Mm. Um... Sarah has all three cookbooks and she loves the quick, easy recipe. She made the pumpkin roll and it was so delicious. That is in oh, volume one. I love that Thank pumpkin you. roll. Oh, and so good. let's see, for those of you who don't know what pumpkin roll is, it is. That is, it has cream cheese and powdered sugar in. Oh my goodness. It's to die for. I'm sorry, but anything that looks like that. It it's has good. To be good. Oh, I used to make it all the time at Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yeah. But... Uh, oh, my. Deborah says, a hiding story. When my first child was born, my mother bought me almost $1,000 worth of baby clothes and told me not to tell my dad that she had bought them all. She had been hiding them for four months. Oh, I, I probably spent $10 on my first baby's clothes. But to hide them like that. Yeah, that is. And see, that's what I was talking about. A lot of people have seen their parents. Now, you maybe don't. Uh, you know, I'm not saying that you do. But some people do it automatically because they've seen their mothers or their grandmothers do it. And so they just think that's the way you should do it. 
Wow. Uh, our price book is sold out of the print version. It's at the printers right now getting reprinted. But um, yes, we also have it online if you want a digital version. Vicki, I never could understand waiting to get Costco gas, especially if you're leaving the car running the whole time. I know. I, know. I always wonder about that. I'm like, what? It's Colorado. What are you people smoking? Well, and they used but, to get the gas would be like 10 cents or 5 cents cheaper at one gas station. And they'd stand in these lines for they would to save five dollars to save. And the car was running because it was hot out, you know, and they'd have the air conditioner running. And yeah, you're right. I could never figure that out. You guys. The whole point, if you there's a theme here, you have to start thinking through what you're doing with your money, how you're spending it. Don't get the mob mentality because everybody's doing this. Everybody thinks this is the best way to do it, that that's the way you should do it. We just follow the mob, you know, and you've got to really the Bible talks about in the end times, we're going to start being deceived. And I I used to think it was just about the things of the Bible and stuff. And it is that a lot, but it's going to be about everything, everything. And part of deception is you just go along like a zombie with whatever the crowd is doing or whatever you heard somebody say without you thinking you've got to start thinking, you know, the, and figure this stuff out. Um, Elizabeth says she made the homemade baking mix from our cookbook. I'm assuming volume one, but it's also in our gluten-free edition if you guys need it. And she made muffins with some jelly in the middle and some with raisins and cinnamon. Mm, yum. yum. Kimberly says I'm going to use one of my large empty containers to put homemade Bisquick in because my mom used Bisquick for everything and I never buy it. Yep. I love, love it. I use it all the time. You know what a good recipe for that is? And I think we have it in dining maybe is where you take chicken and you coat it in margarine and then you coat it in the bisquick and put it in the oven to bake and oh that is actually so that yummy. recipe is coming up on super easy recipes next oh, week is it? next week's video. watch for it that i love i was thinking of that the other night i hadn't made that for a while it's really yummy kimberly says i always check the prices per ounce per pound and really the grocery store is the same price or even cheaper yep mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you are totally right she's talking about costco um, uh, Heather says, Dining on a Dime Volume 1 is the best chicken and dumplings. I use it for turkey as well. Yes, as a matter of fact, I thought about buying a turkey and doing videos just so I can have me some turkey. It was 98 cents at Walmart. And that's not a great deal on turkey, but that's a very good deal for just meat in general. Mm -hmm. Um, Susan says, we're entertaining and encouraging. <laughs> How do we take that, I wonder, <laughs> the entertaining part? <laughs> I don't know, but we got some serious issues with all you shopaholics. I, was, <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. That think really about traumatized this. you, didn't it? Well, I feel like we've been talking and flapping our jaws for 25 years and nobody's listening no, to us. No, I think you guys are listening. I've, I've gotten some good comments of people that we've helped. So then why are they stressed shopping? Oh, it's new people new that people. haven't learned or been with us very long. I don't know. <laughs> Margaret, my daughter and I used to go to Sam's on Saturdays at lunch and eat all the time and samples for lunch. Yep. There you go. <laughs> That's one way to do it. Yeah. Um, Rachel says we are doing the pickup free on next door. Anyone do that and share with their neighbors? Yes, we have done that before. Mary Ellen, I saved so much on my probiotics at Costco. It's worth it just for that. Yeah, there might be something yeah. special like that. And if it is, definitely do it. Yeah. But as a general rule, I guarantee you. I could go to 95% of the baskets that come out of Costco and every single one, half the stuff in there is not what they came in for. Yeah. I'll guarantee you. If you I can know have self-control and just go in and get that, you know, or the other know. couple yeah. of things, but most people don't. That's what we mean. Most people don't have that. There are good deals, just like any other store. Kimberly says, that's what was so nice about having a stockpile. When all this <coughs> news came about, she told her husband that she didn't have to run the store to fight over TP. Yes, that's why you always keep your stockpile going. Mm -hmm. It's not a ebb and flow thing. It's a, just a continual thing. Um, Kimberly <coughs> says, my youngest son is in the military and stationed in another part of the country. I just pray all the military men and women. Yes. Yes, always, Please. always pray for him. Farm wife, you have to be careful at Aldi now, too. Their Isle of Shame, <coughs> the name for the Isle, all the non-food stuff is dangerous. It's crazy how many people <coughs> fill their carts with that stuff. 
<coughs> Are you dying? Do you need to call 911? What? Fell off. Oh, thanks, Michael. <coughs> Sorry, guys. What did you say again? <coughs> we'll let you finish. Uh, we'll let you just finish coughing there. Finish choking to death. <laughs> um. Okay. Let's see. Ooh, Kitsy has fam family in Israel praying all oh. the time. Yes. Mm -hmm. Um. Jane. Sam says good prices for toys at Christmas. They probably do. Joshua. I just moved three months ago and I'm living off my stockpile right now. Very good. Very good. Crazy cat lady. Just because the rapture is so close doesn't mean it's that close. We have to make the most of every day. Yep. Um, <coughs> well, the Bible says just to occupy. And I think you all know that. If you know about the rapture, you probably know that. That we're just supposed to keep doing what we're doing, you know. I'm not. Um, the next batch, Mike. Um, Amy, Noah continued to build. Yes, mm -hmm. he did. Danielle, I live a mile from my parents and super handy for both of us. Very good. Mm -hmm. Sandy, she's watching from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. Take care and say, stay safe in a world that is crumbling to pieces. <coughs> yes, it is. You just mm -hmm. got to hang on for the ride now. <laughs> I mean, I really think I had someone tell, ask me the other day, you know, how are we going to get our country back into... Um, Back, back normal into normal again, which, by the way, and that Speaker of the House thing kind of interesting that happened today. Um, but I was like, there is no normal coming back. There is no way this economy can be fixed. It just it's not going to be fixed. You cannot. It's just not feasible to do unless you cut literally every single thing in the country. It's just not fixable. And so anyway. It's right going to have now, to it's change. Just, it's It'll, just it's going to have to change. Right. Yeah, and you're just going to have to. Um, Danielle, she made turkey noodle soup tonight. Oh, thank I you. Love you're welcome. Right soup. here. Mm -hmm. And it's very, very inexpensive and so good. Okay, type one if you love fruitcake. Rachel says her husband loves fruitcake. I want to see how many fruitcake <laughs> lovers, fruitcake lovers of the world unite. I want to see how many of you Tara's dad love, love fruitcake. fruitcake. And that's what I bought him every year for our anniversary. Susan especially. and Elizabeth Bounty. Oh, there's lots of oh, fruitcake lovers. There's a lot of fruitcakes out there, huh? <laughs> see? <laughs> I'm not the only one. Fruitcake is actually very delicious if you cook it correctly. Mm -hmm. um, Amy says, David Jeremiah has a new book out called The Great Disappearance. Cool. I did not know mm -hmm. that. Patricia says, is it hard to make bar soap? I wouldn't say it's hard. You have to be very careful and follow the directions correctly. But I wouldn't say it's hard. As a matter of fact, what's funny is I'm going to be making some soap tomorrow. Found out <laughs> the hard way that three of my potassium hydroxide bottles had broken open over here. <laughs> and I have a big old mess. So I think Mike found a dead mouse. I think a mouse tried to, to um, eat a hole in the garage in my potassium hydroxide. So guess what happened to that mouse? Oh my! <laughs> that so, poor mouse. <laughs> so he got a little shock of the shock of his life. Um, oh, but uh, That's so so, <laughs> so now uh, so I so now I have some potassium hydroxide that's still in the bottle that I need to use up, and so I was I'm actually getting ready to make some tomorrow so I can get rid of my big mess. Well, here, you've got a channel on how yeah, to make go soap. watch my how to make soap channel. Yeah, Mike can maybe put that in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's got a channel that and, shows you how to, and that'll give you an idea of what you need and how to do it if you. And I have a soap making e course you can get also, which is very detailed and tells you how to start from from start to finish, how to make soap. Very detailed, very easy. Tori says, did making your own soap save money? No. No. It does not. That's, I'm not going to tell you it saves be, money. That was going to be the next thing. I don't, personally, it doesn't save money, you know, save you money at all. So, yeah. Unless you just want to know how to do yeah. it. Although it is a good skill to have. Yeah. Um, have. Although we've got enough soap to last oh, us I'm, both a lifetime. I have... <laughs> I, I'm not exaggerating. I have at least 300 pounds of soap. Oh, at geez. least. And now Boxes. I'm getting ready to make more to use up the potassium hydroxide that I messed up, but or that got messed up. Mm. But 
Um, Vicky says her late mom always used to make fruitcake cookies. Yeah, those are good too. Mm -hmm. I love anything with fruitcake in it. Mm -hmm. Just give me something fruitcake. So <laughs> Kimberly, I've been saving a little bit of leftover chicken and I'll rinse whatever sauce and spices were on it and put it in the freezer and I'm going to use it to make a big pot of chicken soup. Very good. Mm -hmm. Yep. She does that now to save money. Diana, Very what good. time are you going to be on Saturday? We're not going to be live on Saturday. The grocery audit is going to be an upload. So it'll come out about noon on Saturday is usually when we at uh, mountain time. <clears throat> Sandy says people are complaining about the cost of living, but you should see the lineup at the liquor store and Tim <sighs> Hortons coffee shop. <laughs> this makes me so I mad. People sit at the grocery store and complain about groceries. How much chicken breasts are. And it's nothing are. but Pop-Tarts and juice boxes. Well, I get frustrated. I, every time I high. drive between Tara's house Ugh. and mine, I go through every restaurant or past almost every restaurant that's in town. And they're packed. I mean, there's just not a few people there. The parking lots mm. are packed. So I agree. I just... I, it's hard to be patient, you know, with people... When you, and complain about, about um, how they don't have money for stuff when they keep going out to eat like that. And I saw a commercial. This isn't totally on that subject, but they had a commercial that said, oh, I love going. I have this app on my phone because I can now overdraw $250 and it doesn't do anything to me. Yeah, except give you another $49 overcharge fee they think this is a wonderful thing and the thing is about this commercial is i know good and well most people think that they think this will be great because i can just overdraw and spend more than what i have and it doesn't i won't it's for some reason in people's mind when they hear something like that they think they don't have to pay that money back it used to be like the discount store of uh, furniture stores and stuff would say, you don't have to pay, buy your furniture now at Christmas, and you don't have to pay for two years, no interest. In their mind, they're thinking, we don't have to pay this for two years. Two years goes by, they don't have the money saved up and they can't pay for it. So they don't realize you have to pay all the back interest on that stuff on top of that. So you've got to not think like that, that nothing is free, you know. <laughs> what? Uh, Terry says, yes, about the socialization and cashier lanes, drinking coffee at the library. We didn't realize how much we chatted with people until 2020. And then Jan says, my son, when we moved to Montana, said to expect it to take time to check out at the store because <laughs> cashiers visit with each customer. Now I view it as part of my social life. <laughs> I do too. Exactly. Well, even the cashier, I mm. chatted with her. She, I found out she's from the Philippines. She's only lived here for a year. What her husband did. I mean, I know every cashier and their life story now that whenever I go. So it's, it's fun. It really is. <laughs> Which store is this at? Walmart. Hmm. I, well, I do it. Uh, Albertsons too. Talking about. Yeah, I do this at Albertsons too. <laughs> so, we, well, never mind. We people watch us from here. Never mind. We won't do. We won't have Mike do his impression. <laughs> no, we're gonna have Mike do his impression. Okay. <laughs> so we have this guy at Walmart, and he's just so he's just so show him the face. So show him the look on his face. The the greeter guy at Walmart. Oh, he's show always him. like. Welcome to Walmart. <laughs> Everybody knows him in town. Like if you say that, everyone will laugh because they know who he is. He's a nice guy, but he's like super monotone. It doesn't say much of anything, but there, welcome there. to Walmart. <laughs> it's like he has no expression at all. It's anyway, so I guess it is my social life. Okay. Diana says, that is what I love about your cookbooks. Is it home cooking? Thank you so Thank much. You. Guys, it's 24 hours is left for a 30% off, 35% off sale. Somebody asked if we're going to be having on 50% off this year. No, we're not planning on it at the moment. Unless Mike needs a kidney or something. If Mike needs a kidney, then we'll put him 50% <laughs> off. But he doesn't need a kidney at the moment. So. <laughs> 
Teresa says she just got the first book. And let me tell you, it's heavy. She's been reading it every night and loves it. That is volume one. Thank, Thank you. you. And Elizabeth says, good old cooking like mom used to make. Yes, it's mm. mom, grandma, and great grandmas, and then my recipes in there. So, um, Joanne, did you ever tell us what Mike's brilliant idea was? Yes, it was a new pantry out of a hallway. So you can go back and watch that video. It came out in June, I think, May or June. When you were saying it's mom, grandma's, and all those recipes, I didn't tell you. I got a comment the other day. This lady was really, really mad at me. And she said, I'm not going to ever watch you again because we had a recipe in there that her mom had. And she said, how dare you steal my mom's recipe? Oh, my <laughs> she was, I know. Another lady was like, oh, they're plagiarizing recipes. We are not plagiarizing you, you recipes. Can't first of that. all, they're not protected by copyright no, in the first place. They're not. Secondly, though, every recipe in the book, we have changed to make it ours. But even at that, recipes have been it's a for recipe. decades and decades the same recipes. You know, you just... <laughs> Yeah, You're I'm not sure anybody. I went through your mother's recipe file. I snuck in <laughs> in the middle of the night and got her recipe file. But she was very, very upset Goodness. with me. And <laughs> That's ridiculous. Oh. Um, what do you love best about living in Wyoming? The snow, because it keeps people away. <laughs> <laughs> I get to stay home. I get to stay snowed in. I really like a lot of stuff about it. Yes, but yeah. we're not going to tell you because no, we're not gonna, it snows we don't a lot. Want, we don't want anybody to come move here. It's so It really <laughs> is nice. It's Danielle, the Amish cinnamon rolls are the bomb. Thank mm. you, Heather. I only use your cookbooks and I am diabetic on a controlled car plant. Thank you, yeah, Heather. Thank you for telling <laughs> other people that. We keep telling people that and they don't totally yeah. understand. So thank you. Suzanne has all three cookbooks. She said, get them people. Thank you. <laughs> you guys are being so sweet. <laughs> Uh, Kitsy says, I literally growing bell peppers from a store bought pepper seeds. Yep, you can do mm -hmm. that. Very good. Uh, Jane says, change is hard for people, even if it means saving money. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It is yeah. hard. Um, Kimmy from She's in Her Apron says, oh, I would hi, never Kimmy. pay $5 for ground beef. Oh. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. You just eat something else, you know, if you have yeah. to. Um, okay. Next is... Do we all have a do we have a Dollar Tree? Yes, but it's not that great. They don't keep it very stocked very well. Although it's better than it was because it was closed yeah. for a while. So yeah. it is they can't get people to work. It's Ruth, 50 cents for progressive soup is a very good deal. Oh yeah. Cindy says she just came back from Kroger. She shopped to add, downloaded digital coupons and saved $65. Commented mm. uh, the cashier commented how great savings. Yep, very good. On the progresso soup. Uh, I bought that and I didn't like it very well. And so what I, and I didn't want to throw out all the cans I bought of it. And so I discovered something. I took spices, the spices that I use in my, my stew recipe that's in the book. And I used those spices, put that in the Progresso soup stew that was like my stew. And it tasted so much better. So take some of those canned goods like that and add spices that you use to your chicken noodle soup or your potato soup. Add some cheese, you know, and bacon bits and things like that. And that'll really up the ante on them and make them taste more like home cooking, too. Um, Vicki says on page 274 for the... Um, Pineapple upside down cake. Is that a glass pan or metal? I did metal for everything. I don't think I did a glass pan for anything. Well, I don't know. Let me look and see. I'm pretty sure I didn't do a glass pan. Well, I think just... usually we use metal pans. And if we do use a glass pan, we'll mention to turn the temperature down 25 degrees in the book. Yeah. Just, a right, just any pan is fine. Yeah. Any pan is fine. Um... Okay, let's see. Kimmy said, we had the first grandchild on each side. She didn't have to buy any clothes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Heather says, Mike, I need the next batch. Heather says, my mother cleaned out a yard sale for my first layout, including a battery-operated swing for $30. I know. Mm, I mean, yeah. I, I literally, I probably did not spend... I can't even imagine I spent $20 on BJ when we were first born. We did receive the crib as a gift and everything else we got at garage sales. Mm -hmm. 
So Amy, probably silly question, but are some of the recipes family ones? Yes. So in volume one, 100, 100 of the recipes are mom, grandma, and my great grandma's. And then the rest are mine that I filled in from things that I wish, like taco seasoning, like taco seasoning isn't a family recipe. But apple crisp is a family recipe, no big fudge cookies, the roast, snickerdoodles, the, the roast, uh, the turkey, stews in there. Yeah, those are all mm -hmm. family recipes. Tanya, homemade biscuit is so easy to make. Yep. Mm -hmm. Wanda, living on a dime to grow rich. I got an email that my price book was shipped yesterday, but I can't find a tracking number. There is no tracking number because we shipped it first class. So it will just show up. Um, so I will tell you guys when, when we get the new ones, they're not going to have the spiral. They're going to be just stapled in the center. We are having a major shipping issue with this nice little spiral here. You can thank your local post office that we have to do them stapled in the center now instead. So sorry about that, but had to make a decision on that. So. Denise, I promise I will only ask one more question. That is okay. Do mm -hmm. you primarily substitute rice flour for the gluten-free breads? No, I primarily substitute one for one baking all per or one for one gluten-free flour, which is not just rice. If you just substitute rice, you're not going to get baked goods. You have to have a combination of the rice flour, the tapioca starch. Um, the corn starch, the potato starch, um, what was the rest here? Let me look real quick. I can't remember. If you don't add those other things in, then it's going to taste, um, and then sweet rice, brown or white rice. So if you, if you don't have the variation or if you don't have them all, the combination of those, then you're gonna, it's gonna taste like sand. So it's the combination of all of those together that makes the gluten-free flour blend taste like regular. You have to be careful on baking things because it's more of a scientific type thing with mm -hmm. the chemicals and everything mixing together just the right way to get it to taste right. Some things you can get by with substituting, but in baking, you have to be pretty close. And with gluten-free baking, you have to be very, very close. close. You yeah. have to follow the recipe exactly. Like I'll get hate mail from people. Well, you said this is the best sandwich bread you ever had. Well, I just substituted rice flour for the baking or for the all-purpose flour. And I just substituted buttermilk for whatever. No, you have to follow the recipe exactly mm -hmm. for gluten-free baking. It is not going to turn out if you don't. After you figure out gluten-free baking, then you can substitute and do it. But as a general rule, it needs a lot more moisture. It needs a lot longer cooking time, baking time. And it needs some sort of acid like vinegar or buttermilk or something like that to help it rise. So, and it helps to have pans that have ridges on the edge so that as it rises, it has something to hold on to. So that's not a necessity, but it is a help. Yes. Um, Tracy, speaking of which, just got the gluten-free cornbread video from my gluten-free channel. Michael put that in there for you, the link for you. It came out today. And yes, it's very delicious. Thank you. Can I make a video about gluten-free dinner rolls? Yes, that is actually my next video. Well, I'm trying to decide if I want to do the pumpkin roll or I'll probably do the pumpkin roll and then I'll do the dinner rolls so that they'll be ready for Thanksgiving. Um, you keep watching super easy recipes. Is that where you're putting in gluten-free? Mm -hmm. Watching those because we're going to try to Tara's going to try to put recipes out that you might be using for the holidays. She says, I have all three books and she made, I think she's saying she made the rolls and they seem kind of heavy. If your rolls or breads are heavy, it's because you're scooping your measuring cup into the flour instead of taking a spoon and putting it into your measuring cup and then leveling it off. That's why it would be heavy. Valley in the Badlands. Tara was in the city last month. I really tried to buy some new clothes, could not find a thing I wanted to buy. Yeah, I totally get mm -hmm. it. Uh, Donna says her Christmas gift food baskets for the kids and small gifts for the granddaughters. Very mm, good. Good idea. Um, let's see. 
Francis said she just finished making the busy day soup. Thank you. Mm. I hope it was good. Teresa says, yes, I live in the country, work 45 minutes to work, so I do my shopping and gas in town. Yep. Very there good. Mm -hmm. Valley Badlands says people need to get away from the government, everything, and stand on their own two feet with community. The government will not be there when things go down. Yes, you are right. Um, Kimberly says the Speaker of the House quoted scripture in his speech on the stairs of the Capitol. I know. It was very <laughs> impressive. I was super impressed. He mm -hmm. would probably be way better than... Mr. Trump ever was in office, I have a feeling. Would that just not take the cake? <laughs> oh my goodness, that would just not take, that would just take the cake. If something happened to the two clowns and he got in, <laughs> wow, <clears throat> that would be crazy. I see some impeachment coming along, if you ask me. <laughs> I know it would never happen, but Lori, my New Year's resolution is to get into the Living on a Dime Cookbook Volume 1. Why are you waiting till New Year's? <laughs> Start now. Thanksgiving is coming up. Use our turkey. Yeah, use our dinner yeah. rolls. Use our pumpkin pie. Use our stuffing. All of those recipes are perfect. They're easy to do and make, make yeah. your life a lot easier. They taste good. Um... Teresa says she just bought it and loves it. It was a late birthday gift to me. Happy birthday. Oh, yeah. Happy and birthday. All you two will be a Christmas present. There you go. <laughs> Merry Christmas, too, then. <laughs> <clears throat> Cooking with Cat Lover says, Tar and Chill. I thought today of all the recipes in the menu ebook. I thought that's the one. Lots of easy recipes. Yes. we The menu ebook. The menu's ebook. Yep. Mm -hmm. Those that, are all really good. Yeah. The menu's ebook is really fun. It has some easy, really good. Yeah. Jay Moore seems cheaper to buy soap and other things like candles, unless it's a hobby. It is. Cheaper. It is. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you making your homemade soap is cheap. It's mm -hmm. not. Um, I mean, unless if you wanted to use wood ashes and <laughs> your bacon grease and hamburger grease and it's practically free. Okay. Then it is, but you know, you got a re really complicated soap making there. So, um, let's see. A lot of people about the fine print and interest rates. Yeah, interest rates are crazy on some of that stuff. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Kimberly says, being overdrawn, I'm. it's horrible. It's just not, it's not just the charges. It's the once you're overdrawn and you have to pay it back, then you're behind and you keep behind. Yeah, yes. you can't catch up with it. That's what people don't realize yep. happens. Mm -hmm, you're right. Yep. Jim says, snow ice cream in Wyoming. Yes, mm. that was the very first video we ever shot for YouTube. Did you guys know that with snow ice cream? That was the very first. Oh, look at there I am. Uh, that was the very <laughs> first video we ever shot. Yep, right there. 16 years ago. Okay, guys, here just because I can, because it's my show. Um, watch this just a second. You guys want to see something funny? Oh my goodness. Let's see. Share screen. Here we go. This is Tara Kellum Here with we go. Living on a Dime. Dime. Com. Today I'd like to bring you one of our most requested recipes from our cookbook, Dining on a Dime, and it's snow ice cream. It's a very simple recipe that you can do with your kids on a beautiful wintry day like it is here in Kansas today. All you need is a few simple ingredients. You need half and half or milk, sugar, vanilla, and of course snow. You mix your milk, with your sugar and vanilla and stir thoroughly until the sugar is dissolved. Then you need two cereal bowls full of clean snow. We set our bowl outside as soon as it started snowing to start collecting the snow for the snow ice cream. Of course, if you didn't think I had to do that, you can just go and find any clean spot and just scoop the snow off the top. Be sure you don't get any rocks or where any chemicals have been applied. Then. After you have your snow in a mixing bowl, then you want to pour your half and half or your milk mixture over your snow, just like so. And then you want to thoroughly mix all of the milk in with the snow. Just keep mixing. You'll think there's not enough milk, but there really is. It starts getting to be a crumbly consistency. And after you've mixed for a few minutes, you have the consistency of soft ice cream, just like homemade ice cream. Put it in your serving bowls.
Then you can add your favorite topping like chocolate syrup or sprinkles and enjoy. For more free recipes and tips, please visit our website, livingonadime.com. <laughs> I know. Oops, sorry, Dara. I didn't mean to take you off. That was our very first video. Oh, my goodness. And it was so stinking cold. cold. I was going to say, it took Kansas, us like four dude, uh, hours to film that video. I'm not exaggerating. Uh, we were out there so long. It and we had the did the sliding glass door open because we kept going in and out. <laughs> oh, it was so cold. Poor Dave was holding the microphone. He was like five years old and he was holding the microphone. And you can see in the video, my hands were actually red by the time we got to the finished one because it was awful. People, I always laugh. People say, well, it's so easy just to go make a quick little video. Like it's nothing. They, you guys have no idea what we do behind the Well, now scenes. it's way easier than yeah, what we did now before. Than then, but yeah, you didn't, a... you didn't have uh, phone cameras and all that back then. Oh. You had to have actual cameras and separate microphones. And yeah, stuff. somebody holding the microphone and all that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 16 years ago, I was in my 30s. Holy moly. <laughs> Um, did you see that cute young thing there, dear? Yes, I did. <laughs> uh, okay, send me the next one. So, yeah, I mean, that was 16 years ago, so Jack wasn't even born yet. Hmm. Um, oh, I got it. Okay. Um, and okay, let's see. I just didn't know if that was our Facebook problem, Mike. Found a new scratch and dent side by side refrigerator for five hundred bucks. Bucks, you go, girl. Oh, that is great, deal. Sandy. Good job, yeah. Eva. I've never understood why people want to be secretive with their recipes. What's so dumb is there are no new recipes out there. There's mm -hmm. really not. Somebody has made it somewhere else. We have studied so many. I have at least a lot of really, really old recipes from the 1800s, cookbooks and things like that. And none of this stuff is really new, hardly at all. Even like when the lava cake came out or what is that what they call it? i would had that recipe for 30 years before it became popular and was all over Pinterest and everything, yeah. you know, so... Um, and says she loves my chili recipe right here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Found any bad land. People can take their book to Staples if they would like them spiraled. Yes, actually, that's a great idea, Bounty. So if you buy the next set and they have the staple down the side, we are actually leaving the margin like this so that if you want to get it, um, the spiral, you can. It's not very expensive at um, That's Home a good Deco. idea. Mm -hmm. But uh, what happened is, so, all right, post office. <laughs> Here's what happened. How thick would you say that is? Oh, it's not even a quarter of an inch. It's more like an eighth of an inch. Three quarters of an inch. Oh, that's not three quarters. No, hold oh. on. Is what fits into is the next level up from an envelope to a package. They are no insisting way. this is a package product. No way. And they're charging after our viewers pay like $4 in shipping in the first place. They're charging them on the other end, three to $5 to receive it. $8 for this. Oh my it word. It only happened to a couple of people, but Here's the thing. Mike went and had a chat with the post office yesterday because <laughs> he's like, this is ridiculous. And they said, yeah, they said, this is actually, this is fine for an envelope. There's no reason why yeah, it shouldn't go through as an envelope. Say. And she said, it depends on the receiving end. They get to make the decision. But here's what she said. The post office has been sending out email after email after email telling them this kind of thing is an envelope. And the post offices aren't listening. They're still and they're charging. still doing it. So we've had to go back to having them just stapled in the middle so they won't have the spiral because we don't want our viewers being so charged. then it'll be cheaper because if they would get in charge, it would be cheaper just to take it in and have yeah. that done yeah. on their end then. So wow. we had one viewer one time, the post office, we sent her books media mail. And they charged her $9 shipping because they said it wasn't media. 
And guess what? They didn't even open the package to, to see it was books. Hmm. Makes me livid. Absolutely livid. And if you have trouble like that, you take it to the post office and you show them is what oh. you shouldn't have to do it. But, you know, you don't need to pay it either, I wouldn't think. I mean, and so if, you, if that happens to you, you need to holler at the post office and tell them, no, this is envelope size. I'm not paying it. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. The cookbooks go off sale tomorrow, Joanne. Today is the last 24 hours. Nicole, how long will shelf-stable milk be good after the expiration date? If it's in the box, I would say six months to a year. The powdered milk forever. So, Tracy, my daughter's excited to make the gluten-free pumpkin bread. Yay, we oh, made it good. yesterday. And um, it's already gone. Of course, yes, I have twos, teens. And is cinnamon roll muffin recipe... On the website. It is not, but it will be in two weeks when I put the video out on my uh, gluten-free channel. Uh, the link is in the description below. All right, guys, please go grab our cookbooks. 35% off right now in the link in the description below. Go watch this video next, and we will see you guys next time. Have a Bye -bye, great night. Bye, guys. We love you.